Good afternoon. So let us start our lecture today. So last time we were trying to solve the equation ux x is minus two, <coughs> and x is in the interval from zero to one. All right. We have borrowed the condition u one that u zero is zero, <coughs> and you know that u x at one is also zero. Right. So this is the equation that we tried to solve last time. This is a boundary value problem because you have the two boundaries at zero and it's one, right? Uh, <clears throat> um, so here M, in the previous class, we were trying to find the eigenvalue and the eigenfunctions for this uh, uh, equation, right? So consider, the set of of eigen function phi n and eigen value lambda n. Um, so you have phi n um, second is minus uh, is lambda n phi n. For uh, x in zero and one, all right. Phi n zero is zero, and phi n prime at zero at one is zero. <coughs> then phi n forms an orthogonal basis. Um, for the set of solution of one. All right, so this is the theorem. This explains why in the previous class we have to look into the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions of this equation, right? So, <clears throat> so suppose that I want to solve this equation, the second derivative u is minus two, u at zero is zero, the derivative in x of u at one is zero, right? And, and we solve this problem from zero to one. So I have a theorem. Um, so I consider all the set of all eigenfunctions and eigenvalue, uh, eigenfunction phi n and eigenvalue lambda n, then such that Phi n second is lambda n phi n, and you have the same boundary condition, right? So phi zero has to be zero, and phi n prime at one has to be zero, right? Then this will become an orthogonal basis for the set of the solution of this equation, right? <coughs> Questions? This is why in the previous class we have to study these uh, eigenfunctions. It's clear? Questions? Now, in the previous in the previous class, we computed the n of x. This gives me that uh, the n is sinus of one, sinus of n plus one half pi x. Uh, n is one zero one two three, and lambda n is. Uh, uh, is uh, n plus one half squared. All right. Yes. But we got negative for the lambda n. Yes. Thank you. Can you sign at the back of the paper, please? All right. Um. So I explain again. Now I give you about the values problem, right? Now I uh, I consider the space of the solution of this equation, right? <coughs> so so if I consider the set of all of the eigenfunction phi n and eigenvalues lambda n of the uh, of this equation, so you have phi n second is lambda n phi n, and phi n of zero is zero, phi n prime at one is zero, 
right? Then phi n becomes an orthogonal basis for the space of the solution U. That's clear? So in the previous class, you know that phi n is sine s of n plus on 1 half pi x when x is from 0 to uh, uh, 1, uh, when n is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and lambda n is minus n plus 1 half squared, right? So, <coughs> since Pn is a basis, we can, we can span u, the solution u. Right, so you now have ux is a0, phi0 of x plus a1, phi1 of x plus a n, phi n of x, etc. And this I write like the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of a n, phi n of x. And this is nothing but the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of a n, sinus of n plus one half of x. Yes? Not when the n was n pi plus pi over two. Uh, n pi squared, right? Thank you. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Yes, I will miss the pi. Other questions? Right, so I explain again. Now, I want to solve this equation. Yes? I want to solve this equation, so what I'm trying to do is to look into the eigenvalue uh, problem. <coughs> so the eigenvalue problem will be phi n second is lambda n phi n. The boundary condition at zero is zero. Boundary condition at one is derivative at one is zero. So this uh, phi n will be an orthogonal basis for the solution, right? This is why after you compute the eigenfunctions, you can expand u like a0 phi0 plus a1 phi1 plus a n phi n. So this is uh, this is equivalent with uh, what I wrote here. So the sum of n is going from 0 to infinity of n phi n, and this is a n sine s of n plus 1 half pi x. Right? Questions? Now I want to compute the second derivative, right? So what is the second derivative of u? Yes? Symbol n from n plus to 0 to infinity of lambda n dn. Yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So when I compute a second, if you sign. Uh, so when you compute a second derivative of this guy, questions? I'm just trying to read what the, it says sine of prime x. Okay. Thank you. Um, so the second derivative of un, right, will be the sum. When n is going from 0 to infinity <coughs> of a n, phi n of x, right? Okay, so I'm going to write uh, in the, the normal way. So you have a0, phi 0 second plus a1, phi 1 second of x plus a n, phi n second of x plus etc. Right. So I'm gonna take the second derivative of this uh, sequence. So I'm gonna take the second derivative of all of this guy, right? But from this eigenvalue, what do I what do I have? I have that okay. So phi n second of x is lambda n phi x, meaning that phi n zero second will be lambda zero phi x. Phi n one of prime second will be lambda one. One x, right? It's clear. So when you take this, the uh, second derivative of u, what you do is that you take a second derivative of all of the pn, p1, p2, pn, right? But we know from the beginning that pn second is lambda n pn, right? So which means that pn zero second will be lambda zero p zero pn one uh, is lambda one p one, etc. Right? So this gives me a0 lambda 0 phi 0x plus a1 
lambda 1, p1, x plus uh, a n, lambda n, p n. Right? It's good. And I can write this in the abstract form, which is somewhere n is going from 0 to infinity of a n, lambda n, p n x. Questions? Screen? I explain again. Right. So, so I want I want to solve this equation. It, instead of solving this equation, what I'm doing is that I look into the eigenvalue problems. So I have p n second is lambda n p n with the same boundary condition. Right. So the boundary conditions are important. Now, what I'm doing now is okay. In the previous class, I have already the form of p n, which is sinus of n plus one half pi x. Spin. And lambda n will be minus n plus one half square uh, uh, pi square. So, because this is the basis for the so, uh, solution space of this equation, what I'm doing is that I expand u on this basis. Right? So, u will be a zero p zero plus a one p one plus a n p n, right? So, this is the abstract form of this one, and p n is the sinus of n plus one half pi x. Now I want to solve the equation, so I have to compute this uxx, which is the second derivative of u. So when I take the second derivative of u, I have a0, p0, second plus a1, p1, second plus a n, p n, second, etc. Right? But I know that p0, second will be lambda 0, p0, p1, second will be lambda 1, p1, p n, second will be lambda n, p n. Right? So I so this is the abstract form of the equation. So so basically the, the 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 advantage of this sequence is that when you take the second derivative, you only need to multiply with the eigenvalue, right? So what you do is you take this sequence, you multiply lambda zero here, lambda one here, and lambda n here, and you get u second, right? So the key idea uh, of all of the eigenvalue uh, techniques is that in order to, to take a second derivative of u, what you do is that, okay, you take a series, you multiply each coefficient with lambda 1 and lambda n. It's clear? Questions? Right. So now, uh, this is u second, right? u second. All right, so uh, what I want to do now is that I'm going to expand the minus 2 as well, right? Because in the first place, I already expand. And now I'm going to expand the, the, the minus 2. Screen questions? Right. So now I have minus 2 is B0, P0 of X plus B1, B1 of X, plus Bn, Pn of X. Right? So how do I compute B0? Yes? Yeah. Uh, you got the integral of 2 times sine X and pi uh, plus pi over 2 divided by the integral of sine x n pi plus pi over 2 squared. Yes, can you stand the back of the face of this? Now I want to compute p0, right? So what I do is that I multiply minus 2 with p0. This is the inner product, right? I remind you that this is the inner product of uh, a Fourier. So the inner product of two functions f and g will be the interval from 0 to 1, which is the interval fx dx dx. All right? So I multiply everything with P0. So I have B0, P0x, P0x, plus B1, P1 of x, P0 of x, plus Pn, Pn of x, P0x. Plus the sector. Right? 
So basically, what I'm doing is that I, I take the interval from 0 to 1 of minus 2 times p0 minus dx is equal to interval from 0 to 1 of d0 of p0x times p0x dx plus interval from 0 to 1 of p1 p1 of x p0 of x dx plus integral from 0 to 1 of pn, pn of x, p0 of x dx, etc. Right? So what I'm doing is that I multiply everyone with p0 and I integrate. Right? Now, what happened? Yes? Never mind, answer my question. Yes. Uh, so what happened with those guys? Why? Yes. Can you say the back of the paper, please? So in the theorem, I said that this form an orthogonal basis, right? Which means that they are, when you multiply them and you integrate them, this guy is going to be zero, and this guy is also going to be zero, right? But I haven't checked that this is a, an orthogonal. I'm gonna check it later, right? I'm gonna show that this is really orthogonal. Uh, any questions on this? So, so they are orthogonal, so those guys go away. Um, so finally, what I get is the integral from 0 to 1 of minus 2 times p0 x dx is v0, the integral from 0 to 1 of p0 x squared dx. All right, so v is a constant. I pull it outside, so I have v0, the integral from 0 to 1 of p0 squared dx, right? So basically, I'm going to get V0 will be integral from 0 to 1 of minus 2 V0 x dx dividing by integral from 0 to 1 of V0 squared dx. All right? Questions? Speak. Yes? Uh, bottom left, the second line up, there is supposed to, that's uh, the last there is supposed to be a n uh, lambda n i n x, right? This is x, right? Uh, up above that? Yes. The last there is, is an x there, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, but uh, it's, it's, it is an x. Right, so any questions for this? So now the, 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 the series for u second you don't know, but you know that u sec when you, you take this uh, second derivative of u, you're going to multiply lambda n to a n as the coefficient, right? Now I want to, to know the series for minus two, right? So the minus two will be V0, P0, plus V1, P1, plus Bn, Pn. I multiply everyone with V0. So these, these guys will be zero. So what I get is uh, uh, minus two P0 x dx is V0, integral from zero to one of P0 squared dx. So V0 is, is given by this uh, formula. Now I want to compute the Bn. So how can I compute Vn? Yes? Yes? Well, um, instead of P naught, you put Vn for that equation. Right. Can you stand the back of the paper, please? So, so to compute V0, you multiply everyone with V0. To compute Vn, you multiply everyone with Vn. Um, so you're going to have minus 2 Vn of x is equal to um, P0, P0 x, Pn of x, um, plus V1, V1 of x, Pn of x, plus Vn, Pn of x, Pn of x. All right, questions? Now, what happened with all of those guys? Yes? Yes, there's zero, right? So all of those guys, so if n is different different from zero, so this guy is with zero, n is different from one, and this is zero, so the level base is gone, right? So you're gonna have what? You have minus two, p 
Pn x is Pn Pn x Pn of x right so Pn will be minus 2 Pn integral from 0 to 1 dx dividing by integral from 0 to 1 of Pn x squared Because we are solving from 0 to 1, right? So you are solving from 0 to 1. All of the functions here are defined from 0 to 1. Okay. Right? So because you don't care about what is going on outside. You are solving the equations from 0 to 1. You have two boundary at 0 and 1. And, and from 0 to 1, this is the interval that you, you want to solve. You don't, you don't know what is going on outside. Would there be a scenario where if that number, we could just solve those numbers here? Instead of the ux1, let's just say there's a 2 there. There's 2 here. No, and ux under. So it's going to be the same, right? So you, because the eigenvalue problem is, is to replace this equation by p and second is number and p n. And you don't do anything with the boundary condition. So you're going to use the same, the same p n. He's asking if the boundary conditions always match up to the range you're given. Yes. Yes, because you are solving it on this interval. So the boundary condition is, is at the two end of the interval. So right, so what is the boundary condition? Right? So so you solve an equation, um, for instance, from minus five to five, right? The boundary, the boundary means that what is going on at minus five, five. So, so you have to put some condition at minus five, five, and those are the boundary. Right? And and what is going on inside the interval? What is going on inside the interval is the equation. Right? See, see Yes? So I'm looking at uh, u of double x there and it says two. Mm -hmm. But down the equation for b of n you've got negative two. Okay. Oh, no, it's just okay. <laughs> yes? So you're saying there's never gonna be a case where you have uh, x from 0 to 1, and you know, for, for the boundary conditions, you have u of x, and let's say 0.5 is equal to 0. No, then this is because you are solving, right, so now you are solving the equation from 0 to 1, right? Then you have u second is minus 2, right? Right? So you cannot define the derivative, second derivative. So basically, the boundary condition is not the point in the middle. The boundary condition is the point added to boundary, right? So you don't know what is going on. You don't know what is going on at zero and one. So you have to give some condition for zero and one. But at a point zero point five, you know that u second at zero point five is minus two. Okay, so let me explain this again. Uh -huh. So what is the boundary condition, right? So you so this is the equation at zero. From one, right? So u second uh, is minus two, right? Meaning that okay, at zero point five, u second at zero point five is minus two, right? Now what is going on at zero point seven? U second at zero point seven is minus two, right? It's clear. So the equation is u second is minus two on the interval from zero to one means that. At 0 0.5, you know what is going on. You know so that u second is 0 0.5 is minus 2. At 0 0.7, you have u second and u uh, 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 0 0.7 is minus 2. Right? But this is not. Uh, the equation is defined only from the open interval from 0 to 1. Right? So, so which means that at 0, you know, at 0. So, so this is satisfied only inside the interval, right? So so you cannot say that u second is zero is minus two. This is wrong, right? Because this is satisfied only from zero to one without two boundary, right? So you have to, to say uh, what is going on at zero and one. 
clear? Yeah. Right? So basically, what, uh, what we have uh, say, uh, showing is that, okay, u second is minus 2 for every x at between 0 and 1. And at 0, you need, a, you need something you need, uh, to define it. And at 1, you want something to define it to close the interval. It's clear? Uh, other questions? Right. So now, so now, okay. So I have this VN, which is the basis for for everyone, and I know that okay. In order to compute VN, I have to multiply minus two with VN, and then VN is given by this formula, right? So, so I have a, a question. So, so in, for instance, if I solve the initial value problem, right, is equal to five, my x is going from zero to infinity, and u at zero is one. You know the meaning of this equation? This is a first order differential equation, right? Uh, in this case, this is first order, so you only want you only have one condition, this is the initial condition, right? Okay, so this is the initial condition. So so what is the meaning of, uh, can I say that u prime at zero is one, uh, is, is, uh, is five? Yeah. Why? Because it's u prime of x is equal to five, you only have one point um, in between zero and infinity. Excellent, yes, right? So, so u prime at x is, equal to five is defined only when x is strictly greater than zero, right? So which means that you have u prime at 0 0.1 is five, u prime at 0 0.01 is five, is u prime at 0 0.001 is five, but u prime at zero is not five, right? So you have to give some value for zero. And this is the meaning of initial condition, right? So when you change from initial uh, value problem to value value problem. Uh, uh, so initial value problem is on, only working if you have uh, first order differential equation, right? So if you have second order differential equation, you need two condition at the two points. So as long as you increase uh, the uh, the order of the equation, the more points that you need to. All right, so let us go back to this uh, uh, Vn, right? So Vn is given by this formula, and this is where we stopped last time. Uh, so Vn will be interval from 0 to, uh, to 1 of minus 2 Kn x dx. So now I'm going to replace um, Vn by sinus of n plus 1 half pi x dividing by integral from 0 to 1 of sinus of n plus 1 half pi x squared dx and dx, right? Questions? I assume that we're not going to be able to divide uh, or to factor out the, the sine from top and bottom. Why? Because that would be easy. So it's easy then. Okay, so we've got uh, sine of n plus one half pi x on the top, mm -hmm. and sine of n plus one half pi x squared on the bottom. Would we mm -hmm. be able to cancel out? No, those? you cannot cancel. Okay. That's you just, no, this is you, you. have to take the whole thing you integrate, so you cannot factor. Uh, you cannot cancel them, right? So we have to compute each one separately. Questions? Uh, now, let us compute the first one, the integral from 0 to 1, minus 2, sinus of n plus 1 half pi x dx. So how do I compute this guy? Yes? Um, so in this case, since it's negative 2, when we integrate it, it becomes uh, positive 2 cosine n plus one half uh, pi x divided by n pi plus uh, uh, one half divided by that. Right. 
you stand at the back and prepare for this. So for this guy, I'm gonna have integral from zero to two. I have a uh, number two. I have cosine s of n plus one half pi x. So I, I don't have the integral anymore. So I have n plus one half pi, and I take the difference between zero and one. Right? So, again, I, uh, so the antiderivative of sin s n plus 1 half pi x is cos n uh, plus 1 half pi x, and then I, I have to divide by the factor, which is n plus 1 half pi. Uh, so what is the value for this guy? 2 over n pi plus pi over 2. 2 over n pi minus 2. Because you have to subtract 1 and 0. Just add a back to the of this. So here you have 2 cosine s of n plus 1 half pi minus cosine s of 0, right? And then you have n plus 1 half pi. This gives me the first guy is 0, right? And the second guy is minus 1, all right? So I have minus 2 over n plus 1 half. So this is minus 2 over n plus 1 half. All right, so now I'm gonna replace this Vn by minus two over n plus one half the pi. All right, this is clear. I explain again. So here I have sinus n plus one half, so the antiderivative of that will be cos n, but I have to divide by the factor. So then I have to take the difference between zero and one. So the first one gives me zero, the second one is minus two. Uh, so this is minus 2 over n plus 1 half pi. But just right. So I finished the first guy. So now, what is the second value? So what is the second value? How can I compute this into? So this is 1 minus cosine s of 2x over 2. This is excellent, right? Um, so, so then I'm going to replace this here. So I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 1. 1 minus cosine s of 2 times n plus 1 half pi x. So I don't have, uh, and I have to divide by 2, and I take the difference between 0 and 1. Uh, and yes, I'm not, no, sorry. So I have to type the integral dx. Right? So, uh, how can I compute this one? So I'm going to split the 1 half and the cosine s. So this gives me integral from 0 to 1, 1 half dx minus integral from 0 to 1, cosine s of, uh, so here I have 2n plus uh, 1 pi x, uh, and I have 1 half dx, right? So the first step is that, okay, I'm going to split uh, 1 half. So I have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 half dx, the second one is cosinus of n 
2n plus 1 pi x. So I'm going to split, right? So what is the uh, result for the first integral? Yes, one half, right? So the first one is one half. So this is x over two. You take the difference between zero and one. Um, and the second one, what is what is the second one? Yes. Zero. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So you have minus one half sinus of two n plus one pi x divided by two n plus one pi. So you take the difference between zero and one. And this is zero, so finally you have one half. All right? Questions? I explain again. So here I have sinus of n plus one half pi x squared. So the sinus x squared will be one minus cosinus two x over two. Uh, uh, so, so here I split the one half and the cosinus. So the one half, when I take the antiderivative, this is x over two. So I take the difference between zero and one is give me one half. The second one is cosinus, so the antiderivative of cosinus is sinus. I take the difference between zero and one, and this gives me zero, right? So finally, I have one half. So I'm gonna replace here by one half. One half. All right. So, so uh, this I'm gonna simplify this guy. So this gonna give me minus four over n. Plus one half pi. Right. All right. So I have the form of the V n. Right. Questions? It's good. Right. So I have the form of the V n. So I, I have to uh, plug it back here. Right. So minus two will be. So here this is minus four zero plus one half pi. 0x plus minus 4 1 plus 1 half mm. pi p1 of x alright plus minus 4 over n plus 1 half pi pn of x alright that's good so I have the general formula here, which is minus 4 over n plus 1 half pi. I plug it back to minus 2. I have minus 4 over 0 plus 1 half pi. So here, this should be 1 half, right? 1 half pi, this is 3, half pi p1. And then here, I have minus 4 n plus 1 half pi pn, right? Now, to summarize, this is a lot of computation, but what we see is the form So you have what? You have is u0 is a0, p0 plus a n, p n Right? And you know that u second of x will be a0, lambda 0 P zero x plus an lambda n p n x, right? It's good. Now you know that minus two will be minus four over pi one half of pi p zero x plus minus four over three half pi p one of x plus minus 4 and plus 1 half pi p n of x. Right? We don't know what is a0, a, uh, what is a1. So we don't know anything about a0, a1, a n, right? But we, we know the expansion of minus 2. The expansion of minus 2 is minus 4 over pi over 2 p0, minus 4 3 <laughs> over 2 pi pi 1, um, minus 4 and plus 1 half P, pi uh, pn um, uh, x, right? Um, so how can I find u? Yes? Uh, from the expression u of x is equal to the n pn, the summation of n equals to zero, uh, of a n pn, 
b and x, and since u of x is equal to negative 2, that means a and p and will be equal to b and and you can find a and b. Right, can you stand at the back of the paper, please? So what we did is that first we do the expansion for u second, and uh, use xx, and, and next I do the expansion for minus 2. Right, u is the unknown, I don't know what is u, but I know that u second will be a 0, lambda 0, a n, lambda n, p n, right? And I know that minus 2 will be all of this. So now I can identify the coefficient of this guy and this guy. So this is equal to this one, and this is equal to this one, right? It's clear? So you then have a 0, lambda 0, is minus 4 over 1 half pi a1 lambda 1 will be minus 4 over 3 half pi. And in general, you have a n lambda n is minus 4 over n plus 1 half pi. Right? It's clear? So what is the value of a n now? So then you have one, you have um, a n. Um, so a n will be minus four over lambda n, n plus one half pi, right? So a n will be minus four over minus of n plus one half pi to the power three. Because lambda n is uh, lambda n is what lambda n is minus of n plus one half square pi square. It's clear. So I have this again, and I plug everything back to the uh, to to the original series. So u x will be um, a zero. So you have minus. So so because here I have minus minus. So this is not a big deal. So I have one. Uh, F three pi three b zero x plus four over um, three over two cube pi cube p one of x right so and I take the sum I have four over n plus one half three pi three three n of x and basically this is the solution. So I explain again. So what you do is that, okay, to solve this problem, you forget about the, the first equation, right? You forget about the first equation, you replace the first equation by p n second is lambda p. And then the, the boundary conditions are the same, right? Um, then you, you, find, you solve this system, and the p n will be an orthogonal basis for the solution u, right? Um, now, because this is an orthogonal basis, you have u x is a zero p zero plus a n p n, etc. Right? It's clear. So u second will be a zero lambda zero p zero plus a n lambda n p n, because you take the second derivative of this series, which means that you take the second derivative of all of the p n. But you know that p zero second is lambda zero p zero pn second is lambda n pn, etc. right? So you have this series. What you do with the minus two is that, okay, you also expand minus two on this basis, right? Um, so I, so you can expand minus two, like minus four over uh, one half pi, minus four over three half pi, minus four over n, uh, plus one half pi, pn, right? Uh, so, but you know that, okay, it's u second and minus two, they're equal because of the equation, right? That's good. Um, so you're gonna identify the coefficient a zero lambda zero is minus four over one half pi, um, a n lambda n is minus four over n plus one half pi, right? Um, so after you identify, a n will be this guy dividing by lambda n, right? So now you you have all of the coefficient of uh, an. You put everything together and you get a solution, right? 
screen. So, question is, can I write this uh, like uh, a normal function? It depends, but uh, in general, you, you have a series. Right? Sometimes you can write this as a function, sometimes not. So, in the solution, you can give, leave the solution as a, a series. It doesn't matter, right? Questions? It's okay. So, I'm gonna uh, summarize everything. So this is the method, the transformation method to solve boundary value problem. Uh, transformation method to solve boundary value problem. So, so here uh, the, the transformation method is the following. Suppose that we want to solve. Suppose that we want to solve. That we want to solve. Um, L of u is equal to f um, L of u x is equal to f x when x is from a to B. So this is basically uh, an interval, right? You want to solve about a, a second order differential equation on an interval AB. You have two boundary conditions. The boundary condition one at A is equal to zero, and the boundary condition U at B is equal to zero, right? So in the previous example, in the previous example, Uh, L of u is u second f of x is minus 2 boundary, boundary 1 is uh, a is 0 and b is 1 so the boundary uh, at 0 at a become u at 0 and boundary <coughs> at b become u prime at 1 right so so this is the general method. You have L u is equal to f, and you want to solve it in an open interval IB, right? So the boundary condition is at A and B, because this equation is satisfying without A and B, right? Uh, so, so L u is equal to f. In the previous example, L u is u second, right? f is minus two. The interval that we consider in the previous example was A is zero and B is one, right? Questions? Um, so we have two boundary conditions. B1, u at i is 0. So B1 is u0, and B2 is u prime at 1. Questions? It's clear? It's fine. Stop me if you don't understand. It's clear? All right, so now the method is the following. Um, the method is the following. So you ex so consider the boundary value problem. I'll consider the the eigenvalue problem. Um, um, so you have phi n, L of phi n is lambda n phi n. Um, and so here you have an x of course. So x is from A to B. So you have V1, U at A, V N at A is going to be zero. And V2, V N at B is going to be zero, right? So this is the eigenvalue problems that we considered in the previous example. Uh, L of V N is lambda N V N. V1 at V A, V N A is zero. V2 at V N B is zero, right? So in the previous example, uh, so you have Pn second is lambda n Pn, 
and um, Pn at 0 is 0, and Pn prime at 1 is 0. Right? So the uh, eigenvalue problem is the same with this problem, except that you have L of Pn is lambda and Pn, but you don't change Pn, B1 and B2. Right? So in the previous example, you have you still have this second derivative. So here you still have the second derivative. Uh, you have Pn of 0 is 0, and Pn prime at 1 is 0. Okay, questions? Uh, then, Pn is an orthogonal basis. Basis. All right? In the sense that, okay, which means that Pn, Pm will be 0. And this is integral from A to B of Pnx, Pmx dx, um, when n is different from m. Right? So if you consider this eigenvalue problem, then the Pn becomes an orthogonal basis because they are orthogonal. Uh, the inner product of Pn and Pm is 0, which means that the integral from A to B of Pnx, Pmx dx is going to be 0 with n if m is different from, from n, right? It's good. Now, so now since Pn is a basis, Pn is a basis, you can compute Mx is the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of Bn, Pnx, in which Bn is computed by Fpn divided by Pn, Pn. Alright? Alright? So, so because Pn is a basis, you can expand F as a sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of Bn, Pn. Right? Uh, in which Bn is Fpn over Pn, Pn. Right? So in the previous example, in the previous example, uh, in the previous example, uh, example, you have what? You have Bn is minus 2 integral from 0 to 1 or minus 2 sinus of uh, n plus 1 half pi dx over integral from 0 to 1 of sinus of n plus 1 half pi square dx. Right? It's clear? So, because Bn is a basis, f can be written as the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of Bn, Pn, Pn is computed by taking the inner product of f with Pn dividing by Pn, Pn, right? So in the previous example, you have what? You have Pn, Bn is the integral from 0 to 1 of minus 2, right? Because f is minus 2. Uh, sinus of n plus 1 half pi dx uh, dividing by integral from 0 to 1 of sinus of n plus 1 half pi d, uh, square dx, right? Yes? Why is it not? And the right, so there's a pi x. Right, so now we um, now you we need to compute we need to compute a n. Right, so now you you want to compute a n, which is the coefficient of 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 u x. So, uh, so because the Pn is an orthogonal basis with this boundary condition, this is important, right? So you have to have that u x is a sum when n is going from zero to infinity of a and Pn, right? So, the, so which means that u second uh, l u will be sum when n is going from zero to infinity of a n lambda n. In the previous example, L is the second derivative, 
So I take the second derivative of phi n, I get lambda n phi n. So I just multiply a n with lambda n. And lambda, lambda n is given, right? Lambda n is uh, minus of n plus one half pi squared, right? Right. So in the previous example, we have what u is a sum when n is going from zero to infinity of a n phi n. L is what L is the second derivative. So when you take the second derivative, you multiply n with lambda. N. That's good. Now, so now you have f, which is here, and you have l u. So how do I solve? How do I find n? So we know that L u is equal to f, right? So L u is equal to f means that this sequence is equal to this sequence, right? So we have the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of a n, lambda n, phi n, is equal to the second uh, sequence. So we have phi n, phi n, x, right? So you know that, OK, f is this sequence. L u is this sequence. A n is not given, but L u is definitely A n lambda n u, uh, p n, right? Uh, so we, we know from the uh, uh, equation that L u is equal to f. I can identify the two sequence, right? And I have uh, A n lambda n is p n. So A n is p n over lambda n. Right? Questions? So which means that the solution will be ux will be the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of bn over lambda n phi n x, right? And, and this is going to be the sum when n is going from 0 to infinity of uh, 1 over lambda n f phi n over Pn, Pn squared of Pn x. Right, so this is the solution. And in this case, you don't have to know what is the form of the equation because you, this is a series and not a function, right? So you, you, you solve, uh, and the final result will be a series, yes? When using this method, uh, can we always assume that Pn is gonna be sine of, uh, and by x plus pi it's always sinus plus sinus. Okay. The only thing that change in all of the example is uh, uh, is this um, number, right? Okay. So it's it's going to, it could be the sinus of n plus one third, for instance. Uh, it depends on the problem, but it could be n plus uh, three half of n uh, plus one over four, but it's always sinus of course sinus, right? And how will we know whether to use sine or cosine? You have to solve this problem. To solve this, eigen, this eigenvalue problem. Right. To solve this eigenvalue problem, you remember that in the previous case, what we did is, um, is that, OK, uh, <coughs> so to find the phi n, right? And then phi n, phi n is 0, is 0. Phi n prime at 1 is 0, right? Remember that in the previous class, we want to solve this guy. So what I do is I look into the characteristic equation, right? There are three cases. The first case, lambda n is negative. There's nothing in the first case. Lambda n is 0. There's nothing in the second case. The last case gives you lambda n is positive. And this is the case. This is the critical case, right? Remember that? So the, this is the critical case that gives you two solutions. Uh, x1 is i times the square root of lambda n, and x2 is minus i square root of lambda n. Remember, remember that? So, so which means that phi n, 
of x had to be c1 of cosine s of square root of lambda n x plus c2 of sine s of square root of lambda n x right this is where you see cosine s yes lambda n is actually mm, lambda n is uh, negative and positive uh, because because if it is uh, negative you don't have an imaginary uh, solution, you have a real solution, right? The notes we have here says lambda less than zero, therefore x squared is equal to uh, lambda n. Uh, uh, yes, so, yes, so, uh, so this is equal to lambda n. Sorry. So the characteristic equation here, can you both sign the back and back of this? So the characteristic equation for this is x squared is lambda n. Remember that? So, so when you have a second order differential equation of the form bx prime plus cx, Zero, so the characteristic equation is a square plus b uh, a uh, square plus b uh, plus c is zero, right? So in this case, the characteristic equation is x squared is lambda n. So when lambda is negative, when lambda is negative, you have two imaginary solutions, and because you have two imaginary solutions, you have cosine s and sinus. This is where you see cosine s and sinus. So now you have to determine the value of lambda n using the boundary condition, right? Remember, in the previous class, you used boundary condition to find lambda n. And the result is always sinus and cosinus because of this, because of the third case. Okay. The only difference is that depending on the boundary condition, you have different lambda n. And, and this gives you different value here, right? But it, it is always cosinus and sinus. So, uh, so, with a different value here, you change the computation, but it's on white cosine and sinus. So you, you expand the function f on this new cosine and sinus with a different value of lambda n that you found. And then uh, and then you identify a coefficient. It's clear. We're gonna go to an, a lot of examples on this uh, so that you know how to solve uh, the, uh, this kind of problem. Yes? So this is M and BN, so okay. I copy it here, right? Oh, I see, thank you. So this is BN dividing by lambda N, so this is BN, so I put it back here. I see, thank you. Yes. Auto questions? It's good. So now we're gonna do a lot of exercise so that you understand how to do it, right? And let's go to another. Any questions before I go to, this is the abstract theory, and we're gonna go through exercises so that you see clearer um, how to use this method. So let us go to another. Uh, uh, right, so you have this is example two point three point seven. Uh, you have UX is minus one. And u0 is 0. u1 plus ux1 is 0, right? And x is here, I have x is from 0 to 1, right? So, you, so uh, my questions, questions, what is L? What is F? What is B1? What is B2? And what is I? And what is B? Right, so we need to identify all of the parameters in the, in the previous framework. So, I mean, we're gonna go through a lot of examples so that you, you know how to solve it. But uh, we're gonna identify uh, the parameters in uh, the abstract argument with the real uh, problem here. Also, what is LU? What is F? Yes? LU is uh, mu global prime. Yes. And F is negative one. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So LU will be U second derivative, right? F will be minus one. Uh, what is I? 
and B. Yes? Zero. Yes, and the back of the paper, please. Right? So you have zero and one. Um, I want to know B1 and B2. What is B1 and what is B2? Zero, zero. No, B1 and B2. So normally you have B1 at A, right? So A here is 0. So B1, U at 0 will be 0. And A uh, will be U0. Right? And B2 of U at B will be U1 plus Ux at 1. Right? So this is the, uh, the, 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 the abstract parameters that we have in the previous example. Right? You have uxx is minus 1, which means that u, lu is uxx. The function f is minus 1, so you have lu is equal to f. The, two, uh, uh, the interval ab becomes 0, 1. Right? So the b1 u is u0 is, is u0, right? So because in the, in, the, in the abstract theorem, we have b0 i0 and b2 u b zero. This is the abstract one. So I'm gonna have b two of u one is u one plus u uh, x is one, right? Now, what is the eigenvalue problem that we need to solve? So I have what? I have l p n is lambda n p n and b one of p n at zero is zero and b two Pn at 1 is 0. This is the eigenvalue problem, right? Can you write the explicit form for that? This is the eigenvalue problem. And if you solve this guy, it's going to give you a basis for the solution of this equation. So that you can expand u and then you can expand f, which is minus 1, right? And, and in the abstract theory, I, I wrote that, okay, the eigenvalue problem will be L of Pn is lambda n Pn, B1 of Pn 0 is 0, B2 of Pn um, 1 is zero, uh, 0, right? So what is the form of the eigenvalue problem? Yes? the back of the paper of this. So, so this will be Pn second is lambda n Pn, right? Lu is Uxx, which means that L Pn will be Pn second, right? B1 of P0 is 0, so B1 is Pn of 0, is 0, and B2, I have the form here, so B2, so Pn of 1 plus and prime at 1 is 0. So, the, so this is the eigenvalue problem that we have, right? Right, so because B1 of U is U0, right? Which means that B1 of Pn at 0 is also Pn at 0 or b1 of uh, any function, any function, uh, any function, right? And then b2 of u uh, at 1 is u1, so you have ux1, so b2 at pn of 1 will be pn at 1 plus pn prime at 1, right? So b1 of u at 0 is u0, so you, you just consider the point 0 of the function u. So if you replace u by a different function, phi is the same thing. You consider only the point 0 of that function, right? So b2 of u at 1 will be u1 plus u prime 
and one. So if you replace this u by the function phi n, you're gonna have the same thing, right? You just you just replace u by you just replace u by phi, right? So you replace u by phi. All right, and here it is the same. You replace u by phi. So here you have u0 is 0. Here you have Pn of 0 is 0. Here you have u1 uh, plus ux1 is 0. Here you have Pn1 plus Pn prime 1 is 0. Right? Right. So uh, now I have the eigenvalue problem. So what can I say about Pn? Yes? Understand the back of the page, the paper, please. So Pn will give you an orthogonal basis. Right? So Pn will give you an orthogonal basis, and which means that uh, you have Pn, Pm, x, the x interval is zero when n is deconforming. Alright? It's good. Now, um, um, so because Pn is an orthogonal basis, what can I say about U uh, and F with respect to Pn? What can I do now? What is the next step? What you do is you expand minus one, right? Like um, B0, P0, plus Pn, Pnx, right? Yes? Uh, so is the boundary condition the difference in this problem for what do we get if it's like uh, around the end? You get a different one. You get a completely different one, but we haven't, uh, we haven't computed that. But the, the, the lambda n and the pn will be completely different. Basically, it will be sinus and cosinus with a different lambda n. Right. So we ha will have to solve that before? We have to solve this before doing this. But be before, before solving for pn, I want to, uh, okay. to remind you about the framework, right? So because all of those are, uh, uh, so the pn is uh, an orthogonal basis, so you can, Expand minus one like b zero p zero plus p n b n b n p n etc. Right now I can also compute u as i zero p zero of x plus i n p n of x. I gotta compute p n p n in a minute using the method that we discussed in the previous time. Right, but I suppose that we haven't uh, done that. Let's let us discuss this general framework. Right? So you so so this is an orthogonal basis that we will compute in a minute. You will see that, that uh, the, the basis we have from sinus and cosinus with the different coefficient on the end. Uh, but let us uh, try to write out a fam framework be before computing Pm. Uh, so you have minus one is B0, P0 plus Bn, Pn, and U is I0, An, Pn. So how can I, so what is the value of U second? Yes? The same thing, but multiply out by minus. Yes, can you say the back of the paper, please? So you're going to have the same thing, right? So you have a0, lambda 0, p0, x, plus an, lambda n, pn, x. Right? And so you have to identify u second and minus 1, because you have ux, x is minus 1. So how can I compute again? <coughs> yes? Pn over lambda n. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So you have u second is minus one, so this <coughs> is equal to this, and this is equal to this, so which means that an is bn over lambda n, all right? Which means that, okay, if I can compute phi n from itself, so I expand again. 
I have a no uh, phi n, but suppose that I can compute phi n. So I can expand minus one like b0, phi0, phi n, phi n, phi n and then u is i0, phi0, i n, b, phi n, b, phi n, so u second is i0, lambda n, uh, 0, phi 0 x plus uh, i n, lambda n, phi n x, etc. Right? Because um, u x x is minus 1, so I can identify those guys. I have i0, lambda 0 is b0, and i n, lambda n is b0, b n. Right? Now, the next step, I want to compute phi n. Any questions on this? So let us compute Bn. Uh, <coughs> compute lambda n. Uh, okay, so compute lambda n. All right, so again, I have what I have. Phi n second is lambda n. Phi n. Right, so how do I solve this equation? Yes? Yes. Yes. Can you say the back of the paper, please? So to solve this equation, we use a method that we uh, discussed before in the LDS class, which is the characteristic equation. So the characteristic equation of this guy is x squared is lambda n, right? It's clear. So, so we have considered cases. How many cases do we have? Three. Three, right. So case number one, lambda n is positive. So how many solutions uh, of the characteristic equation that we have? Is, yes? yes? Can you sign the back of the paper, please? When lambda n is uh, positive, you have two solutions. x1 is the square root of lambda n, x2 is the square root minus the square root of lambda n, right? So, you have two rules for a characteristic equation. So what is the form of lambda n? Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So basically, the solution Pn is C1 exponential of square root lambda n t. Uh, uh, this is x plus C2 exponential minus lambda n x. Right? So this is uh, this is how you solve a second order differential equation with constant coefficient. So uh, I would recommend you to go back to math. 3133, three, I think. Um, so introduction to ODEs, right? So this is ODEs, and, and then this is the Haberman form. <coughs> but, but I, I wrote down the, the, the table for this kind of uh, uh, solution in the previous class. Um, so when lambda n is strictly positive, you have x1 is square root of lambda n and x2 is minus square root of lambda n. So uh, phi n will be c1 exponential of lambda square root of lambda n x plus c2 exponential of minus square root of lambda n x. All right? So what is the next step? Mm, no, no. Not yet, not yet. There is something missing before doing the second case. Yes? Oh, yeah, you have to solve for the coefficient c1 and c2. Can you sign the back of the paper? So basically, we're gonna solve. We're gonna check the boundary condition, right? P n at zero is zero, and and P n at one plus P n prime at one is zero. So basically, what you do is you check the boundary condition. We can continue this on Friday, on Thursday. We're gonna do it a lot. But so so the key is that okay, just. 
if you don't remember this have a man uh, is in this is this fine you can look into the table that I wrote for you last time, right? So you have three cases. You look into the characteristic equation, and then you can write out the two solutions, right? So, so I, I gave you the uh, solution in the previous lecture, so, so you, you have to memorize this table. Let's see how it goes.